Today I'll be showing you guys what is not only my personal favorite titan build, but in my opinion one of the strongest if not the strongest titan builds in the entire game. Not only is it insanely fun and very satisfying to be able to just blow everything up 24-7 with infinite grenades and melees, but the build also has some of the best survivability out of any build in the entire game making you nearly invincible. As you can see here, I'm 15 light under in the legendary campaign, and I can literally just sit here and heal through all of the damage that this boss is doing to me. And this is only with volatile rounds, which we're gonna have up permanently. But on top of volatile rounds, every time we kill an enemy or we just pick up an orb of power, we're gonna completely full heal because of devour, and we'll also be generating over shield like crazy, which gives us an extra 45 HP and a massive 50% damage reduction, which will have up a ton. The build pretty much has everything you could really want a build to have. I mean, being able to just blow everything up 24 seven with abilities by itself is insanely fun, but pair that with the probably best survivability in the game. It doesn't really get much better than this. And it is by far my favorite build in all of Destiny. Drop a like if you end up finding the video helpful and let me know in the comments what your favorite build is. Starting off with the exotic, we all know what we're using here. It's gonna be Heart of Endless Light. Heart of Endless Light is obviously the best pick for this. If you don't already know, anytime that you use your grenade, melee or your barricade it's going to empower all of those abilities mainly not only increasing their damage but also increasing how quickly they regen specifically by 400 percent regeneration rate at one stack and 800 percent regen rate at two stacks with lightfall this did however get nerfed making the buff duration go down from 10 seconds to just five seconds and the barricade only gets 25 percent regeneration rate regardless of the nerfs though this is still by far the best exotic and we can very easily compensate for the lack of the regeneration rate with the rest of the build and i mean let's be honest 400 percent regen rate while buffing the damage is still like absolutely crazy so it's perfectly fine when it comes to the aspects this is really what sets titan apart from all the other classes and ultimately is what's going to make it so incredibly strong first off we have controlled demolition which does a few different things for us first thing that this does is it's going to inherently apply volatile to any of our void abilities namely our grenade and our melee so anytime that we use them they're now going to make enemies volatile when an enemy becomes volatile, they're going to get staggered and dealing further damage to a volatile target causes them to explode. If another target nearby gets hit by this explosion, they will also become volatile. Anytime that we cause a target to have a volatile explosion via doing further damage to them, it's going to heal us and all nearby allies for a massive 90 HP. This is what makes us pretty much invincible with the build because if we just have volatile rounds on and we literally just shoot at a guy, we're constantly proccing the, these volatile explosions. But also anytime we just you know throw a grenade down, it's gonna cause the target to be volatile. They're gonna take more damage from the grenade. They're gonna have a volatile explosion hitting everybody around them, causing everybody around them to become volatile. And we're literally just gonna full heal pretty much instantly and also heal all of our teammates, which is pretty crazy. This has some pretty insane interactions with Echo of Explosion where Void ability final blows cause targets to explode. So our void abilities are already going to be applying volatile, which is going to make them explode inherently, but then they're going to explode again with echo of explosion, causing this pretty insane explosion chain, which is insanely satisfying and you're only ever going to get this amount of explosions and aoe on titan next we have offensive bulwark which is equally as strong as controlled demolition pretty much any time that we have an overshield or we're inside our ward of dawn we're going to gain a 400 percent increase to our grenade regen and our melee is going to not only have increased range kind of like syntheseps but it's also going to do 100 percent increased damage Something that is particularly strong about Offensive Bulwark is it's going to turn our normal melee into a powered melee anytime that we have an overshield active. This is particularly good because not only is this melee going to apply volatile and do 100% increased damage with Offensive Bulwark, but because it's counting as a powered melee, it's going to work with our mod, so it's going to cause an orb of power to spawn every single time that we get a kill. And every single kill that we get with our melee is going to give a crazy amount of grenade energy back. It's like 30% or something ridiculous just with Echo of Exchange. Where this gets kind of crazy is if you happen to be using a Repulsor Brace weapon like I am in this video, every kill you get will give you a full Void Overshield. So not only are you getting the damage reduction, the extra health there, but it's turning your normal melee, if your melee is like down or on cooldown or something, turning your normal melee into something that does 100% more damage, applies Volatile, you'll full heal when you get a kill because you're going to spawn an Orb of Power, you're going to extend the duration of your Void Overshield, and the target will blow up with Echo of Expulsion plus just being Volatile. Not to mention, you'll also heal again because of Controlled Demolition. Like, the synergy here is absolutely crazy when you actually know everything that's happening. To round out the build with the rest of our fragments, I like to use Echo of Provision, where anytime we damage targets with grenades, it gives melee energy. We don't actually have to kill the target, we just have to damage them, and this gives a pretty significant amount of melee energy back, so 
really just fits in with the build. And then I have Echo Starvation, absolutely mandatory. Anytime you get a Orb of Power, it's going to give us Devour. If you don't already know, when you gain the Devour buff, you're going to instantly full heal, but you're also going to gain 20% of your grenade back, and any subsequent kill while you have Devour active is again going to full heal you, and give you a pretty decent chunk of grenade energy depending on which type of enemy you killed. Devour is absolutely busted, and probably the main reason that Void builds I think are still the strongest builds in Destiny. We already mentioned Echo of Exchange and Echo of Expulsion. You could make the argument that these are a little bit overkill, and depending upon how you have the build set up, you could very easily swap out Echo of Exchange and Echo of Expulsion for something along the lines of Echo of Instability when we lose access to Volatile Flow in the Artifact mod. We can make a pretty good argument for Echo of Undermining. I just had a problem fitting Echo of Undermining into the build because we lose 20 Discipline, and this just made it particularly difficult for me to get really high stats and get a whole bunch of energy back. And like I mentioned, Echo of Exchange paired with Echo of Provision is a pretty insane combo, and I really love everything just blowing up with Expulsion, so I'm a huge fan of this setup, but definitely fine tune it if um, you think that you have a better alternative. When it comes to which abilities we're using, I like to use Ward of Dawn for the 35% extra weapon damage bonus we get from Weapons of Light, and also it's on a really low cooldown, but I think it pairs very nicely with the build because anytime we pop it, it's going to give us a full overshield, but it also gives us an entire grenade charge back immediately, which I don't really know why it does that, but that's really, really good. And I think it just pairs very nicely with the build, but obviously you could use Sentinel Shield if you want, just a way longer cooldown. And I don't really think it's as good. And because War of Dawn is such a low cooldown, we can spam it like crazy. With the abilities, you want to be using Rally Barricade simply just because it's a lower cooldown, so you can take advantage of the Empowering buff with Heart of Immus Light more often, and some other mods that reduce our other cooldowns. Strafe Lift is the best jump, no question. When it comes to Shield Throw and Shield Bash, I'm a little bit torn here. I kind of like both of them, but for different reasons. I would use Shield Throw if you're more just using the melee just to proc things, and you're more interested in getting a lot of kills with your grenade and your guns. And I would use Shield Bash if you really just like blowing everything up and having a melee that actually does a bit of damage. It also suppresses targets, which is very strong. Shield Bash and like higher end content definitely wouldn't use because you'll probably get yourself killed trying to use it. But it is very nice having the mobility here, so honestly, it's 100% up to preference. Shield Throw is a lower cooldown and easier to use and just proc everything with the build. But Shield Bash does give you a full overshield, feels pretty nice to use, does more damage, and it's good for mobility. For the grenade, I like to use Vortex Grenade, simply just the best grenade. If you want to use something else, the only other thing I would really ever use would be Scatter, but you have enough grenade cooldown reduction that it's just definitely worth it to use Vortex. When it comes to the stats, it really depends on your overarching goal with the build. Ultimately, we already have so much survivability as it is, so I only went for 90 resilience. You could very easily go for 100, just 3% extra damage reduction, but it also does reduce the cooldown on our barricade, which is nice. And then I went for 100 discipline, because my goal is to just spam the grenade as much as humanly possible, and then you want to dump all the remaining stat into strength. My strength is pretty low, but it still works out perfectly fine. When it comes to the mods, this is really what takes a build from like, you know, working okay to just like completely through the roof, getting your abilities back 24 seven. There's a lot of different ways to set this up and it really just depends on your circumstance and your overall goals. I think what I have going right now is pretty fine tuned and it works very well for me, but definitely try some alternatives if you think that something else would work better for you. But I'm just gonna go over piece by piece what I'm using and some good alternatives. So. First off on the helmet, I have hands on to get extra super energy every time we get a melee kill. And keep in mind that when we have an overshield and we get a melee kill, that counts as a melee kill as well. So we're getting a whole bunch of super energy there. And ashes to assets gives a crazy amount of super energy with grenade kills, so I can just spam my bubble constantly. Void siphon, of course, to get more orbs because we're going to be using a void weapon. If you're in a team, you probably want to swap out hands on to heavy ammo finder and then heavy ammo scout instead of ashes to assets. Really just depends on what you're doing and if you need more um, Word of Dawn uses or not. When it comes to the gloves, these are super important. I went for having two ways of spawning orbs, so I just have a crazy amount of orb regen. Because we're getting cooldown reduction back every time we pick up orbs with some other mods that we're using. So in my opinion, the more orbs the better, right? And because we're going to get so many powered melee final blows and grenade kills with the build, we're spawning orbs 24 7. The gloves have the best mod slots in the entire game. I like you have the kickstart mods, you have momentum transfer, bolstering detonation, focusing strike, and impact induction, all of which give 20% energy back to whatever you're trying to do. So, for example, momentum transfer, anytime I cause damage with a grenade, I get 20% of my melee back. 
I went for momentum transfer because my strength stat is really low. So my melee cooldown is what is the longest. And we're also getting our grenade back through our fragments and through devour. So I feel like my grenade cooldown is pretty good already. And I have a demolitionist weapon. So strength is what I felt was lacking. But if you feel like your grenade is lacking, you want to put on your, you want to put on impact induction. Or if you feel like ability energy is lacking, you want to put on bolstering detonation or focusing strike. It really just depends. I'm not using the kickstart mods because I really like having weapon surges in my build so that I gain extra void weapon damage, which I think really just rounds out the build and missing these is a pretty significant loss. So that's why I don't use any of the kickstart mods. I think they're super valuable. And if you don't really care about weapon damage and you just want ability use as much as possible, definitely can swap those out. Comes to the chest, pretty simple. You just want damage reduction as much as you can. I only have two of these because I needed to put a three discipline mod in. Ideally, you would have all three damage reduction though, like concussive, melee, and then sniper. I have void reserves, don't really need that. For the boots, like I mentioned, I really like having one void weapon surge and you could even make the argument for two void weapon surges. I just wanted even more cooldown reduction through absolution and innervation. Every time we pick up an orb, we're going to get 12% of our grenade back with Innervation. And Absolution reduces the cooldown of everything by, I think it's 7%. I could be wrong. Super, super good. But if you're having problems with like getting your melee back specifically, you could just put on an Invigoration instead. And if you already have your grenade back like crazy, you could take off Innervation, right? A ton of different ways to set this up. If you feel like you even have your abilities enough, you could just plop on three weapon surges because of how often we're spawning orbs i really like having cooldown reduction on the orb mods and then for the class item this is pretty simple i just went for one bomber sorry i went for two bomber one bomber gives us 12 percent of our grenade back two gives us 15 percent it's a little overkill i could probably swap this to distribution and it would probably be fine and then outreach also gives us 12 percent of our melee cooldown anytime we use our barricade so that's pretty good Elemental time dilation is also good to just make our armor charges last longer, but we're spawning so many orbs, I don't really think you need it. When it comes to the weapons, I would highly recommend getting a void weapon that has Repulsor Brace on it. You can get this on the Harsh Language or the Hollow Denial. Repulsor Brace, as reads, defeating any void debuff target gives you an overshield. We're going to be debuffing targets through volatile rounds, and if we just throw our grenade or something, it's going to cause them to be volatile, right? So anytime we kill pretty much anything, it's going to give us a full void overshield with Repulsor Brace very very good here i got insanely lucky with this and i kind of got a god roll with envious assassin which pairs very nicely with having another weapon i can just swap out my harsh language shoot it kill a whole bunch of enemies get my full stack of repulsor brace and then i can swap to something like a demolitionist weapon where i have in my heavy slot to get more grenade back and just get a whole bunch of multi kills and i also like to use wither horde with this build because i can just weapon swap like a madman and i have insane aoe potential but honestly use whatever you want if you have like an Unforgiven with Demolitionist on here, that's particularly good. But I do think a Hollow Denial with Repulsor Brace is probably your best bet. And then something like a Blinding Jail or a Wither Horde in the top slot. And then you can use a Heavy for damage or you can use what I'm using for uh, Demolitionist. Keep in mind that the Regnant can also get Repulsor Brace. Not as good to use like a GL for this, but you can get Repulsor Brace Explosive Light, which is pretty good. When it comes to the artifacts, only thing you care about is Authorized Mods Void, Authorized Mods Grenades, Volatile Flow and bricks from beyond. These are very, very good. You can make an argument for void weapon channeling. If you just don't use your barricade that much or you don't use your super, you could benefit from the da extra weapon damage there. And then you could not use um, weapon surges and use kickstarts instead. But with this build, you're kind of incentivized to have your abilities on cooldown all of the time. So I definitely prefer using surges over weapon channeling. When it comes to how you actually want to play with the build, you'd think that you would need to be a little bit more careful and like think through when you want to use your abilities because of the Heart of Inmost Light nerf. But honestly, it doesn't really matter because two stacks of Heart of Inmost Light, or the two stacks of Empowered rather, it's entirely additive. So you're getting 400% to 800%. So you're still going to get your abilities back just as quickly. I wouldn't spam your abilities like crazy. Like the main thing that I would do is just only use your barricade when you absolutely need the extra cooldown reduction there. Otherwise, just spam your grenade in your melee and you should be fine. Make sure to get kills with your melee when you have overshield up and you know there's easy guys that you can kill to take advantage of echo of expulsion, make them volatile, extend your overshield, etc. Otherwise, just play with the build and it should work perfectly fine. It's very straightforward as long as you're just getting kills with both your grenade and your melee, spawning a bunch of orbs and making sure to just use your weapon here and there to full heal with volatile rounds, you should be perfectly fine. I like giving gameplay tips, but honestly, it's really, really straightforward because you just have so much ability regeneration that you don't really need to worry about anything. You just get everything back very, very quickly. You'll very, very rarely be in a situation where you don't have an ability to use. That's pretty much it for the video though. If you enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one, and I will see you guys later. Peace.